Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. In this video we will be moving over to our obstacles and the level end classes so that we've got those ready to start interacting with. So I'm ready in the scripts as it is so I'm just going to come over here and remember to we can access all of our classes over here and to get these to open we just need to double click on them and I want to start with the obstacle header. Inside of the obstacle header I can press alt and o to navigate to the other class so the CPP is ready as well. And I'm just going to close the game modes because I won't need those anymore. So these are going to be some nice and small classes to implement. And in fact, there's a lot of things we can get rid of to begin with. So we can get rid of the tick update completely and we can replace that with a private section. We probably need the event begin play so we can keep that and the construct is going to be useful. So all we want to do is create a single variable inside of the private section and we need this to be a U property. Uh, we want this to be visible anywhere. We want it to be blueprint read only. And we need to add the meta specifier to allow the private access to this one. Because we put it in the private section, we need that kind of override to allow blueprints to see it though. So we'll say allow private access equals true. And then we just can give this a category and we'll call this one setup so that we know something that we've made. And all this is going to be is our U static mesh component. So U static mesh component. It's going to be a pointer and we're just going to call this cube. So that's pretty much the header done. As I said, very small classes we're going to be working with here. In the C++ file, remember that we need to remove the tick because we've removed the declaration to that. And we can actually just set this to be false. So this is just going to save a bit of performance because we know that these obstacles don't need to check for updates or actually do any tick functionality. So we can set that to be false and remove the function. As we've done previously, anytime we make these components, we obviously need to initialize them. So we're going to, this is going to be very sim similar to when we set up our player. We want to get the cube and create that as a default sub object. Again, we need to pass in the type and it was a U static mesh component. And we're just going to give this some text as we've done previously. And we'll call this cube. Remember that at the moment, this isn't attached to anything. This is kind of just in existence. So we want to make sure that the root component is set up. And as we only have one object or one component, that's going to be the cube. Nice and simple. And that is the obstacle set and ready to go. So if we make sure we save the changes to the header and the CPP file, we can move on over to our endpoint. And this is going to be very similar. So what I want to do, I'm going to remove the public section. We can replace this with the private section. And we just want another U property. And in fact, all of the variables are going to be exposed exactly the same way. So I'm just going to grab this U property. It will be a different type of component though, and it's not as standard as the static mesh. So we need to forward declare this as the U box component. We'll get a reference and we want to just call this box. So again, very simple. We can keep these. We will need the constructor and the begin play. So if we alt and O over to the other file, again, we can turn off the tick functionality. So we'll say that's false. We will remove the function because we don't have the declaration to that anymore. And in fact, I'm going to be a bit lazy again. Go back to the obstacle. I'm going to find the declaration of the cube. And in the endpoint, I'm just going to paste this. Wherever we see the word cube, I'm going to change that to be box. And where we see static mesh, I'm going to change that to box component. Change the name. And again, we're just going to say that the root component equals box. So they're very similar. Uh, one's going to give us the visual representation of the obstacle and the physical component to hit. And the other is just going to be that collider box for the endpoint, which is uh, not visible, but it needs to overlap. All of that's taken care of in the player, though. So we've actually finished those, but we can go back and we can start implementing those into the levels. So if we go back on over to the engine, we will hit compile in here. Make sure that I haven't made any of my standard typos. And hopefully we can start implementing these straight into blueprint classes. Nope. So that has failed. So we'll show the log, see what I've done. Uh, cannot convert ubox component to uscene component. So we'll go back in and see what I've done, where I've gone wrong here. Okay, so it's saying that um, the root component's wrong, but I've just realized that what I've done is I've just forgot to put the include in. So we've forward declared the uh, the box component in the header. We haven't put it in the C++ file. So we'll just say that we know this is under the components and forward slash box component dot h. Save that, go back and recompile. This could be the first time I haven't made a mistake with the uh, typing though. There we go. So I actually spelled everything correctly this time, just forgot to add an include. So if we go back to the classes, we'll go to the runner, the public, and what we want to do again is we want an endpoint to be a blueprint. So we'll put this in the blueprints folder, remove the my, replace this with bp underscore, and create. 
and do the same thing for our obstacle. So remove the my replace the BP, put it in the blueprints folder. And that way we have the naming convention of the CR so that we know that it's coming from the C++ classes because uh, we've got the cube runner naming convention. What we need to do is go back over to our other maps. So I've got main one. A quick thing we can do here, which is uh, nice and handy. Um, in fact, before we do any changes in the actual map, we'll go to the obstacle. We can't see it at the moment. We need to come in and give this the static mesh. Uh, I seem to have made the obstacles blue. So I'm going to not change the color here so that we know that we're using the new obstacles. I'm going to leave these white for now and we can come back in and change the color uh, later. So with the cube in the static mesh component node so that we now have the visual representation, we'll go back to the map. And if you come to the world outliner and shift select all of the obstacles, something which is really cool is if we go back to the blueprints folder, select the BP underscore CR obstacle. So the new obstacle we've just created, right click on any one of these obstacles you have selected in the outliner. And you'll see an option down here. It will automatically give you the option to replace the selected objects with the object that you have selected from the content browser. So if we do that, it's going to keep the scaling and everything um, regarding their position and everything as it was, and just replace it with the other blueprint type. So this means we now have our BP underscore CR obstacles in here rather than the original obstacles. So what we would expect, hopefully, is that this one I pick up collision in things with the player, but I don't think we've set this up correctly yet on the collision types. Um, in fact, as long as we have block all dynamic on here, that should be working fine. Maybe set that to be generate hit events, although we didn't there. It may just be that we haven't set this up in the player file because it wasn't ready anyway. So we'll assume that for now and leave it as it is at the moment. Now, the other thing we need to do is change the endpoints. Now, this is a little bit harder because um, I didn't think far enough ahead in this, and it's really hard to select these. What I should have done is given them a, in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into the end, the standard blueprint up here that we've already created, and I'm going to give this a visual representation. So I'm going to give this a billboard. And the reason being is that we can then select the billboard, which is much easier to grab than the outline. And we can do the same thing again. So we can find our BP underscore CR endpoint, select that as well, right click on the billboard and just change that. So we now have the same thing. Unfortunately, it only keeps the scale. So we still need to scale the box extent back out, but at least it's got the correct position and everything. Okay, so that's map one changed. I'm going to go to map two and just do the same thing. So very standard approach here is basically just taking out all of the old assets or the old blueprints and replacing them for the new ones. So I'm not going to record all of this, but uh, as I said, same process again, come in, get the blueprints, select the new one and right click and replace selected actors with the new actor. Okay, so I've done that for all three of my maps. All of the obstacles are now the new obstacles and all of the endpoints are the new endpoints. Now, the, the reason that the collisions weren't working are quite simply because we haven't done any of the <laughs> collision or the overlap checks. Something I did want to do though is I'm gonna kind of improve on the functionality of this version, just to give us a, a little bit more experience going around some of the C++ functions. And what I thought was gonna be quite cool is rather than having the blocks be solid and uh, immovable, and then just instantly loading or reloading the level, we're gonna add a small delay to the reloading when the player hits the obstacles so that we can give the obstacles some physics. So if we go back into the new obstacle that we've created, the CR obstacle, open up the full blueprint editor and down under the collision on the cube we're just going to set this to simulate physics so this just means that when we hit it what we should expect is we will be able to knock this out of the way a bit there we go so it's not it's nothing great but it's going to look a bit more interesting than it was previously and as i said this is going to give us reason then to rather than instantly swapping we're, we're going to go back over and look a little bit more at timers again now the other thing is we probably want to update the collision settings on the end point so if we go back in here uh, this is going to be set to block all by default. Uh, oh, in fact, set to overlap all by default, which is great because, of course, it's a box collider. So that actually might be okay as it is. And we'll find that out when we come back and implement the rest of the functionality to the player. So I'll leave that one here for today. That is the obstacles and the endpoints updated, though. So that's going to be its own little thing, setting those classes up. We now have all of the classes ready to go. In the next video, we're going to come back. We're going to start implementing the logic into our player so we can start checking for the collisions like we're doing in Blueprints and start progressing or losing the levels based on how we play. As always, though, if you've enjoyed the video or find it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps. Be kept up to date with any of the content from any of the playlists on this channel. 
don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.